Hello, William Smith here with the William Smith Luxury Group at Coldwell Banker in Carmel, California. And all of a sudden I get an offer and the buyers are pre-approved or they're pre-qualified. I don't, well, the check mark says pre-qualified. Should I get really excited about pre-qualified or should I get more excited about pre-approved? Or the third option on this great new contract that we have that's been updated in June of 2022, the Residential Purchase Agreement for California Association of Realtors, they have a third one that's fully underwritten pre-approved. So should I say, wow, I got a full a price offer on my listing and the, the client the buyer's agent says is pre-qualified. Well, how excited should I get? Well, I think that that's better than they're not approved or not approvable, but a pre-qualified is not a, a full verification of the documents submitted. That is a pre-approval. So pre-qualified means they filled out an application. The buyer says that they make this much money, they have this much money in the bank, and they've worked at this job for this long, and they have all this other history that is approvable. But it hasn't been verified with documentation yet. So the pre-approval process takes usually three or four days, and that would be making sure that you have two years of taxes, make sure you have two months of payroll history, usually pay stub, you have uh, two months worth of statements for each of your cash accounts, whether it be checking, savings, or money market. Uh, and that you have a verification that you actually work where you work and you've worked there for a, a certain amount of time. Uh, two years would be great. And if you have worked at a new job because you just transferred here from another area, but you've been in the industry for 12 years, that is helpful and that needs to be verified as well. So, those are the things that need to be done with a pre-approval letter from a lender versus a pre-qualified letter. So a pre-qualified letter is just a maybe. It's not an engagement with a ring or an engagement with a ring and a date. It is just, hey, wouldn't it be great if maybe someday we got engaged? Well, anyway, let's, uh, let's take that metaphor to the next level. You get a fully underwritten pre-approval. Well, that is a ring and a date and the guest list is ready to send out and everything's set. All we're waiting for now is the contract, the uh, preliminary title report and the appraisal for the property. So the buyer is fully approved. Now that's rare that you get in a situation where a buyer has gone to that extent but if you have it, that is really valuable because that really is the same as a cash buyer. So if the property appraises, uh, and we've talked about the appraisal uh, issues on a previous video, and if they um, are able to negotiate a contract that's acceptable buyer and seller, we just go right to underwriting and uh, the property gets approved because the buyer already is and you can have a very quick escrow. So on the new California Association of Realtors Residential Purchase Agreement, the RPA, there is a section that said loan. And off to the side, there's three little check marks. Very important. One's pre-qualified, one's pre-approved, and one is fully underwritten pre-approval. You'd like to have the second or the third in order to take to your seller, if you're the listing agent, and your seller, the seller, seller, you look at that and you want to make sure that that letter from the lender is something that has been documented. And it's just not a piece of paper that somebody scratched out an hour after they met the people or got the application online. So that's the importance of making sure that if you're a buyer, you have a strong, a strong offer with great terms and you have a pre-approval letter or a fully underwritten pre-approval. If you're a seller, you want to get those two things and look for that. Make sure that your buyer, if they are financing, uh, can actually execute this. Because what you don't want is 17 days to go by and all of a sudden find out that the underwriter said, oh, you know what? We couldn't get the income verified because part of it was done without any 
verification in taxes. Okay, so they have a car detail business on the side and they make $2,000 a month doing that plus their other full-time job, but it's not on their tax return. They're self-employed, so they don't have, they don't declare the money. Well, guess what? That money doesn't exist as far as the lender's concerned. So you want to make sure that all of this has been documented. Thank you very much for tuning in. More hints to come from the William Smith Luxury Group. William Smith, team leader, signing off. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.